Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up on this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Diane Carver, Christy McClellan, and Katie Meekum of Brighton Blades. After 20 years of traveling the globe, developing knives for some of the top knife companies, Diane Carver started Brighton Blades, bringing folding knives and accessories to the feminine side of the market. Now, we're not talking cheap pink knives. We're talking folding blades designed from the ground up for women by women. I got my wife and two daughters their own keychain knives from Brighton at Blade Show this year, uh, each with its own separate theme. And I, of course, chose according to personality. And uh, these things are very, very stout little knives. I'm actually surprised for the size of these little keychain knives. My wife keeps hers on her uh, desk uh, to keep her centered whilst working. And, uh, well, my daughters have them wherever they have them. I don't know. I don't go into their rooms. Uh, I love a good family knife business story here on the show, but this will be the first mother daughters knife team we've featured on the show. And we have two thirds of the daughters with us tonight. Uh, happily. I look forward to finding out all about Brighton Blades and the team, but first be sure to like comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell and download the show to your favorite podcast app. And as always, uh, you can join us on Patreon if you like what we do here. Uh, quickest way to do that is thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit thenifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash save on gas. Diane, Christy, Katie, welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast. Thanks for having me. It's really good to have you here. Uh, Katie, I realized I didn't ask uh, for the pronunciation of your name before I read my intro, so I, I hope I didn't butcher it. Oh, you, you nailed it. It's Katie. Oh, I should have just kept my mouth shut, as usual. <laughs> anyway, it. it's, it's, uh, it's real good to have you here, and I want to congratulate you all on uh, the launching of Brighton Blades. It's a, it's a very unique knife company and i've been excited to have you here to talk about it um christine hartman of women carry knives i know she introduced me uh to one of you i just don't remember who it was and uh i'm really really glad she did we are too we love christine and we're really excited to be here all right so i gotta know how did you get the idea diane to start a knife company uh like brighton blades well i've been in the knife industry for a lot of years and so um, one thing that I recognize that there's not a lot of is knives that are, are designed for women. Um, but we wanted something that was going to be unique. And so it was kind of hard to come up with an idea that was different than just making it pink because there are pink knives out there, but not anything that's specifically designed for women. And so we came up with the idea. This kind of happened a lot of it in 2020. And we came up with the idea that we wanted something that was more than just a tool, but also um, would put a smile on the user's face. And so we started putting a list of positive words together and we'd each, we'd each add to it, you know, peace and hope and love and dream and faith and all of the things that are important to us. And we decided that we would combine that you got to forgive me, Bob. I've got a mm -hmm. bit of laryngitis going on, so oh, yeah. I might have them talk a little bit more than they usually do. <laughs> but um, we really wanted to put that into the into the knife, and um, we have positive quotes that go along with it. I'll let you talk a little bit about it. So my mom had wanted to do this for quite a while, and she'd come to us with this idea of making knives for women. Um, but it wasn't until a little bit later that she got the idea to make the inspirational um, line. And kind of when 2020 hit, things were rough for everyone. I mean, everybody kind of had a little bit different situations, but it wasn't an easy time, as you know. And so when she had this idea to make them um, inspirational line, line um, we, we love this. Um, you know, like she said, there's brave 
And not only did we put the name on the cases, but we actually engraved um, the words on the blades. Uh, yeah. Ooh, that's showing nice. this. Anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, they each have cute inspirational sayings. Um, like bravery is not the absence of fear. Bravery is feeling the fear, the doubt, the insecurity, and deciding that something else is more important. Mm, yes. So they each come with a different word engraved on the case and a different quote that goes with them. You know, just reminding you that, you know, when times are hard, um, one of ours is resilient. And that's one of our favorites, actually. The, the quote on that one is, note to self, every time you were convinced you, go, you couldn't go on, you did. And mm. so we just want people to not only have a functional tool that, you know, helps them throughout their day, but also spread a bit of positivity. When times are rough, just remember, be brave, be resilient, have have hope, have faith, believe in yourself, you know, be happy, dream. And, and so we just want to share that positivity with everyone. We, we felt that if it's, if it's pretty, then you're going to keep it with you. Like women will like to keep it. It makes you happy. You're going to have it. And if you have it with you, you have it when you need it. That if you get a knife as a gift and it, it's not something that women want to carry, they throw it in the drawer. They don't have it when they need it. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that it's, that it's pretty that we enjoy to reach for, have it, um, it'll be more useful. Well, okay. So I, I got a couple of questions here, but, but first I, I really like the idea of the different words, um, defining, um, well, defining your brand as, as you were building it, uh, especially considering with knives, you know, uh, we think of self-reliance, we think of a lot of, we, we think of a lot of words, but you mentioned some words that we might not think of peace. Uh, a lot of times, you know, I have a lot of weapons on the wall behind me. I love them uh, for their historical, you know, value and such. Um, and I wouldn't put peace with any of those, but but uh, knives to knife collectors are things that do bring peace because we sit there, we fidget with them, we calm down, we, we think about things while we're playing with our knives. We also love the feeling of using the knives and knowing that we can count on ourselves to open that box. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, knife equals self-reliance. And and, I, and and women need knives just as much as men. There's no, uh, I, I read on your uh, About Us page that you were saying you were, you were tired of always asking your husbands for their pocket knives. And you're like, what are we doing? We, we already have the knife gene, you know? Exactly. Well, I'm not going to lie, at least in my situation, the one that's ordering the most, like, boxes being shipped to my house from Amazon or wherever is me. So I'm the one opening them all. So um, they're just great to have on hand everyday use. And the nice thing about these is they each come with a carrying case, the full size ones that you can throw in your backpack or your purse. Um, and the keychain ones, you always have your keys on you. So they're there whenever you're, you know, wherever you are. So. Right. Well, so the, the obvious question is what is a woman's knife? How do you design a knife for a woman? Well, one thing is size. I am so sorry that I'm so coarse. But size, these certainly fit our hands well. But we wanted to make sure that they were um, really a, a good quality knife also. Not something cute that just was going to fail when you needed it. But we also wanted them to be really pretty. When we first made these, they had a satin finish on the blade. And it just didn't seem as dressy as I wanted it to. So we went back, we did a mirror polished blade. We did a mirror polished bolster. We did jewels on the thumb studs. Yeah. And then Christy did all the graphics on the handles. Oh, and nice. And then, um, you know, yep. having the pouch, a lot of women won't be able to mm. put pocket, knives in their pockets because either they don't have pockets or they don't have enough room in them. Yeah. And so that's why we created the pouches so that they could throw, be thrown in someplace and keep it protected. And nice. Um, the, once again, thinking of women um, and our keychains, like you have, it has the um, carabiner clip on it. So it's easy on, easy off. So if you're going to a concert, that you can take it off, but you can always keep it on handy. Some of those things that we think of every day that that would make it easier for us to enjoy. Using well, and part of the reason that carabiner clip, I don't see I have one out right now, um, is where she said the easy on and off. But for me, I, I've always had long fingernails. Mm. And so a regular, you know, uh, keychain, you're twisting it. And I can't tell you how many fingernails I've broken. So we actually made sure we, we played around with different um, ways to get the knife onto the keychain. And the carabiner clip is the one that we came up with that um, works for, right. you know, 
the the split ring with with nice nails. Yeah, right. That's murder, right? I would imagine. Uh, but not something not something I would have uh, thought of off the bat. You know. Um, uh, so you do all of the um, um, uh, Christy. You do all of the graphics on these blades. What? Uh, let's tell me about how you come up with the ideas for them and and how they. Uh, for instance, I have the. Uh, when you look at a field of dandelions, you can either see hundreds of weeds or thousands of wishes. Now I got this one specifically for my wife because she is always, um, even when it's not in her heart at the moment, she is always there for my girls in terms of uh, teaching them to be positive and to look at the positive in things. And so I got this for her because that's something she would say. Yeah, you could look at dandelions as weeds or you could look at them as wishes, you know? So, um, Obviously, you did dandelions on here, but tell me about the other sayings and the artwork and, and how you started interpreting uh, these concepts in art. Um, honestly, so we came, like she said, we sat down and we came up with, you know, the words that were important to us. We each came up with a different list um, and we kind of did all the ones that we wanted to do. I just kind of came up with ideas. Honestly, um, a lot of them are meaningful to us. So this one is my mom's favorite one. This is the hope one. Um, and this one is our breast cancer. Um, it's got the breast cancer um, logo on there. Um, but that is special to us because my mom's uh, mom and her sister passed away from breast cancer at early ages. And with this one, we give back um, every October for the knives, the hope knives that are sold. Um, we go to the happy one. My husband loves Paisley. Like it makes him happy. Like he is always <laughs> wearing Paisley, like always he's known for it. So we did that one. Um, I've got wit or dream is this other one dream. Um, stars were really special to us. Actually, when we were dating, we would sit out and look at the stars. And, um, one of our favorite constellations was Cassiopeia. So I made sure to put that on there. But honestly, they were just things that were important to us. Some of them were just cute, kind of went with, with the theme. But each of them, um, they were all fun to design. It it actually worked out really well. When my mom wanted to start this company, um, Katie and I don't really, we, we haven't been in the knife world. My mom's been in it forever. And my sister, Kimmy, works with my mom um, with Fox Knives. But Katie and I really don't have a lot, didn't have a lot to do with knives until then. Um, but I had gone back to school to get my degree and I had actually gone into kind of a graphic design degree. Mm. So that worked out really well. So that's why I do the graphics. I do all the packaging um, for our cases and stuff. And then Katie, she's our writer. So she um, used to work for the newspaper. She's really good at writing. So that's her kind of thing. Kimmy does sales. Her, her degree was in sales and my mom clearly takes her knife knowledge. So we each have our own little expertise. So that, that's, a, uh, that's great because you're not stepping on each other's toes. I would imagine. Oh, there's probably <laughs> some of that, but, um, but Katie, uh, do you write the verses, uh, that, that we see on here? Is this, is this part of, uh, what you do? No, I wish that I did. <laughs> I'm going to be that, that inspirational. I, we've taken a stab at it, but we, looked around to find things that would be really inspirational and things that would really uplift us. I do more like on our website or right. um, when things are going out to media and stuff like that, what I do, but um, we, we love the the quotes that, that we found for these. Yeah. But it's that uh, it's that technical writing and that business writing that <laughs> it, that does make a huge difference. I know because uh, I've had to, I've had to outsource that myself in the past. Um, and, and, you know, whether that's to someone else just to just to see if I'm being clear or hiring someone to th th that is not easy kind of stuff to write. Yeah. <laughs> Mark no, marketing, marketing stuff and that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm looking here at uh, Jim has the um, the website up. And so you've been holding up the cases, but this is what this is what we get in a case. We get the uh, knife themed with the case it goes inside now what's inside the case can you open one of these up i'd love to i'd love to take a look is this something that uh edc nuts can fill with all sorts of so these ones um on our inspirational oh. line they just have a little um loop here that the knife can go in we do have i can talk more about that in a minute but um there's little gel packets in here um <laughs> we have another line and the other line has um a little pocket that you can put different 
Seems uh seems things are freezing up. Uh hmm. Well, I'm looking at this uh this one case that they have here that when you unzip it, it does have a loop to keep your knife in, which is cool. And then it also has the um the credit card slip in there. You could also fold up cash and jam it in there. Now, I lived for quite a period of time with uh, my wife uh, before we had kids in New York City. And this seems like the perfect little uh, kind of clutch thing my wife would take because she always has a knife in her purse and uh, and she's always got some little kind of clutch thing, you know, when we're out and about and on the town. So uh, this looks right up her alley. Um all right, so you, um, Christy, you were holding up. Um, we're just we're rolling, so we're gonna get get back into it. But you were holding up uh, one of the pouches. Uh, this is the this is the one here. So now, as you were cutting out, uh, I was saying that this one looks like something my wife would have carried when we lived in uh, New York. We used to live in New York City for a number of years, and we'd go out, and you know, this was before we had children, and we'd go out and. Yeah, she would grab like take a clutch or something that would just hold in her hand. But she always has a knife on her, usually tucked in her waistband, but also in her bag. And uh, that looks like something that, uh, you know, she would have rolled with proudly. Yeah. Now, these ones we're, we're really excited about this. Um, these ones come with our not so heavy metal line. Um, we've got the tan and then there's like a gray case as well. Um, and they're like a nice suede. So they're really fun where you can put the card in, you can carry your knife, you could probably throw a chapstick or whatnot in there and, and just have it, have it with you. So, so I noticed that all of the, uh, all of the knife colors in, is it in this line or in all of them? Uh, they all refer to uh, like black isn't just black, it's black Sabbath. <laughs> right on and uh purple isn't purple it's purple rain mm -hmm. and uh all the way through cultural uh references how, how did that come up well we had so fun with the inspirational line you know coming up with all of the names and then we started with we knew we wanted to do some that were just solid colors and we come up with well now this is boring black <laughs> purple <laughs> and we're like what can we do to make this more fun and um, it was actually Katie, our writer, you know, she's the one that came up with, she started with White Album <laughs> and Green Day or so, a couple of them. And we're like, we like that. And so we sat around and it was super fun coming up with the names, kind of very generational, you know, yeah. I'm coming up with the Blue Oyster Cult and some older, and they're doing Green we're Day. Doing Green Day. <laughs> exactly. So it was really fun and it just made them you know, something unique, set them apart just a bit, just with the color name. Yeah. I got to say like, I, 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 uh, with the blue oyster cult, I think I'm somewhere between the ages of, of all of you. So I was like, blue oyster cult. Yeah. I'm burning for you. And then, uh, and then some of the newer ones, uh, you know, the, the like green day that the youngsters listen to these days, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, it resonates, you know, it makes you feel like you've already got something, you know, invested. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, Diane, I want to ask you, I want to go back a little bit and find out about your uh, past in knives, you know, 20 years traveling the globe, um, working on different knife projects with different manufacturers. I know Fox was kind of chief among them. Uh, tell me a little bit about how you got into knives and uh, what what it was that kept you there. Well, I think <clears throat> one of the, the things. Where's my water? <laughs> you got that. Yeah. <coughs> so sorry. It's okay. Really just... It's okay. Yep. Laryngitis is, is <laughs> nasty when you're trying to do a podcast. It really is. <laughs> um, one of the things, um, when I was growing up, my dad told me that a knife was the best gift anybody could ever get. And so I grew up with that mentality. And <clears throat> I just, um, I started working um, for Browning. Browning's in Morgan, Utah, where I happen to live. And um, so I started working there and I, that's where I got involved with knives. And then um, Fox Knives, which if you're familiar with Fox, out of Italy, was my manufacturer that made the high-end browning knives. Oh. And so they wanted to have uh, more of a presence in the U.S. somewhere that people could order in the U.S., pay in the U.S., U.S. dollars, not euro, and everything, and so started working with them, and that gave me a lot more free time 
to be able to start Brighton Blades. If I was working full time for another company where as a nine to five job, I wouldn't have been able to start Brighton. And um, Gabriella Fratti, who owns Fox, he's been super supportive of this. Wow. He has three daughters himself, and it's been really supportive that we've started a women's knife fight. Uh, uh, <laughs> did you, were you doing, um, for Browning, for instance, were you doing product development, like um, kind of what? Well, I, I was the product, knife product manager. Okay, so that means you're kind of figuring out this year, uh, people want this from Browning, and let's figure out how to give it to them. Yes, yes. I would work with knife designers, manufacturers, all over, you know, Japan, Spain, China, Italy, you name it, <laughs> Argentina, and um, work with the different manufacturers and different knife designers and put together the product line, do all of the pricing, you know, choose the materials. I'm not the designer. I don't start as the basic design, but um, I decide what still we want, what country of origin, what and the material. Because generally, when you get a knife design from a designer, it's a it's either a CAD or a line drawing, uh -huh. and from there you've got to go on and and give the knife the personality and the function that you want that particular knife to have. How in in a project? Uh, how would you decide? Um, what origin, uh, what country of origin? Because I'm, I, I want to ask you, besides the United States, who did it best? Like, or did you go to different countries for different things? Uh, we need a crown spine. Let's take this to Italy. <laughs> well, you do go to different countries for different things. Um, I'm very partial to Italy. I mean, I do work for Fox Knives also, <laughs> but Italy does fantastic product quality. Um, a, a, a little plug we've won, Fox Knives has won overall knife of the year three of the last four blade shows so it, they do outstanding quality but you definitely go for different reasons um one thing knives out of italy are not affordable to everyone i mean they really aren't one thing that was really important to us when we started brighton was besides being a really good quality knife we wanted it something that everyone could afford and we felt really strongly about that, especially women who had never carried a knife before so that they didn't, you know, hesitate to invest $30 in a product. And so. Um, the price, quality, the, being able to create the specific types. Um, can I show off this one now? <laughs> oh, that's promising. I like that. Um, this, this is something that we're really excited about, that um, that we created a knife with Fox Knives, that um, that, it, that it's uh, co-branded with them, that this one is a high-end knife, that this one is out of Italy um, and is, is $375. It's $375. So it's it's not going to be something that um that everybody everybody has but the people that that want a really amazing karambit oh, that yes. we we're offering this that we want to have something options for everyone that we've created so many different things that you know going back a little bit to the not so heavy metal line that there were so many women that would not want um want the all of the designs there's plenty of people that do want this and then there were people that wanted this that um just something that was really really beautiful that that they would love but we have options that are in this price range we have options that are in in this price range that with the, the amazing um high italian still um lmax LMAX. Oh, LMAX. Nice. Yeah, that that uh, Karambit is a really nice uh, dressing up of that design. That is beautiful. And and you know what? There are plenty of I, I did uh, done plenty of martial arts and have seen yeah. a lot of women use Karambits. And uh, that's a that is a, a can, with training can be a great uh, but actually even without training in standard grip, it can be a very good uh, self-defense knife uh, for just using gross motor motion and clawing at someone. I, I hate to put it that way, but that's no, what it's for, right? It, it is. And, you know, we had a lot of women email us and ask us when we came out with our knives if they were for self-defense. And we said, you know, certainly any knife can be used for self-defense. Right. But that wasn't really the intention with our inspirational line. It was more, 
packages and cookies and tags and everything. Mm -hmm. And we realized that women wanted something that they could carry for self-defense. And so we, um, we, we thought about it and we were like, does this make sense with Brighton? And we thought, absolutely, we're all about women empowerment and women you know, just bringing positivity to their world. And if carrying something that's gonna make them feel safe when they're out and about helps them, and we're all about that. Yeah, my uh, my wife has been training for the Marine Corps Marathon, which as soon as she runs next week, she is she's uh, she's disavowing marathons forever, um, <laughs> but not running forever. But it, anyway, she goes running with a a, a little two finger karambit uh, made by Bastinelli. I think it's made by Fox, the diagnostic, oh, okay. and oh, it's a uh, you know it's a it's a small little and she's she's very well trained, but still, you know, um, when your adrenaline is pumping and and uh, you need to defend yourself. Oftentimes we revert to our caveman or cave woman instincts and just kind of fl not flail, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Use our gross oh, motor motions and, and, and that kind of knife is, yeah. is good for that. And I also like the fact that you cannot make a, uh, well, you can, but I'm glad that you are not making a um, knife company for women that doesn't um, acknowledge that possibility or acknowledge that, a sector of the knife market and how valuable it could be for a woman. Thank you. I, I appreciate that comment because that's how we felt. And um, I wanted to offer what we considered the ultimate, you know, self-defense knife for our women. Well, so and knowing that a lot of women wouldn't know how to use a karamba, um, we didn't. <laughs> Christy and I don't. Our, if, if, I wish can. Kimmy was here. Yeah. Our, our younger sister Kimmy um, is amazing. But what we did is we went ahead and we had one of um, the best knife fighters in the world. He flies all over the world and does trainings. His name's Jared Wahongi. Oh, Jared, yeah. He's, yes. he's the best. He's awesome. I love Jared Wahongi. I don't know him personally, but I watch his videos constantly. Yeah. 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 So we actually just did a series of training videos with the Karam, but actually. They're broken down into cool. small segments, teaching different um, styles, how you can protect yourself with them. Um, and we'll be having some of those on our website as well so that people, you know, that want something, but they're like intimidated by it. You know, they don't know how to use it or, or maybe they do, but they just want to learn a few more steps, get a little bit better at it. They can go on our website and and kind of get some ideas there of how, how they can protect themselves. Um, he really liked this one, too. One thing I don't know if she noted or mentioned, but... It's made out of carbon fiber, so it's a lot lighter than um, a lot of other karambits. And that's what, um, especially the Blade Show, anybody that would pick this up was actually really impressed with how light um, these are with that carbon fiber. Yeah, it's carbon fiber and titanium. So two lightweight, yeah. extremely durable materials. Uh, Christy, can you flip that over so I can see the show side? Real okay, so it's all carbon fiber on the show side, and the clip is on the proper side for proper deployment, especially with the wave you got on there. And then when you flip it over, the ring, which is titanium, right, continues around to the back part of that of the uh, lock side scale. That is a very cool design. I, I mean, I like I like the way you did that, and the way the use of the titanium is minimized. You know, and, and like you said, titanium is light, but it's still a metal. And, well, uh, we did the three cool colors, mm. but they're subtle, you know. Yeah. Um, we did do these for women's self-defense, but we sell as many to guys as we do women of these. They're like, we're tired of everything being black. Yeah. I love that purple color, you know, and we get a kick out of that. We like that they, they like it too. So I'm looking at purple on the left, anodized, and in the center, it's kind of a gold. Is that right? It it's a greenish gold. <laughs> greenish it, gold. It's really interesting because these, they're they're interesting because like when you turn them one way, it looks a little bit more green. Another mm. one, we have this this thing that we ask everyone. Some people think it's green. Some people think it's gold. So Katie calls it grold. And we're not really <laughs> on that. Yeah. But she loves call to grold. call it grold. So. <laughs> I like it. I mean, because you, you don't have to guess with Grold. You know, right. exactly, you yeah. know exactly what that's all about. What is it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, the uh, oh, OK. So I was thinking about the um, the color of them and the fact that, yeah, people are tired of seeing the same old black and silver. And um, I, I noticed that a couple of years back, um, blue started coming into things. Oh, look, a blue knife. Wow. What is that for cops? Like, what's this all about? <laughs> and then, it, it, you know, I, I feel like Spider Co. Uh, uh, did a lot of that early on. And um, 
introduced color, introduced a wide, wider variety of colors, but you're, you're incorporating prints, uh, which I think is really interesting. Um, um, some people, most people probably don't know this, but I used to work in the fashion industry uh, when I lived in New York and I was a video editor for a company that covered the industry. I wasn't designing, wasn't like making clothes or anything like that, but I worked for a uh, video production outfit and, 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 and I started to really look at fashion. It's, it's interesting to see how these crazy designs that come out at the beginning of the year or whatever, uh, eventually make the, their way into general population with, oh, I saw that blue color. And that one kind of print um, that I'm now seeing at the Gap, but I saw that you know on that Paris runway show I edited. So it's it's interesting just to see how things can filter into the into the culture and prints here. I think I think that's a, the next that's got to be a next idea because you know we got color now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, our knives definitely stand out, and that's. That's what makes us happy. We try to, you know, share what we like and we hope that other people like, and they've been really well received. Um, we're really excited with all of it. So, well, where are the, um, where are these made? The little keychain knives are, are all your knives made in the same, uh, well, obviously not. The Karambit is a, is a higher, um, higher tier of, uh, product and production so that we know that that's made in Italy. That's a Fox knife, I think. Um, mm -hmm. what about these? They are made in China. These are made um, in China. Yeah. One thing, my experience working in the industry 20 years, I know exactly what each factory's capabilities are and who would be the best to take certain projects to. And the owner of this company that, that's making these in China, mm -hmm. his wife owns a design company. Oh. She's very, very into to design work and everything. And so I knew she'd get what we were trying to do. So I chose them specifically because of his wife's design work that I knew she did so that her and Christy could work back and forth and come up with, you know, the colors that we thought would look cool. And we, we tweaked these a lot. We did brave in gray and we we did lots of different color variations to end up choosing which ones we really like the best at the end of the day and um so our not so heavy metal line is made by a manufacturer in china a different one than makes our inspirational and then fox these are co-branded i don't know if you saw that but it has the brighton on one side and the fox on the other oh nice so you okay. get both logos and then, oh yeah, sure. Um, well, that's a nice problem to have. We have a really <laughs> cute case. Um, in fact, we'll show you this. This has the old logo. Um, our new oh. one actually has both Fox and Brighton, and it's really cute. I, oh, okay. I changed that, but our Karambas actually do come with um, carrying cases. You don't have to buy those separately, oh, nice. um, but they come with those. And then... Yeah, a little Allen wrench and everything in case you. Oh, I think putting the tool in there is so polite. I love that. Hey, uh, with these though, I want to talk about these for a quick second because they're surprisingly smooth and uh, smooth for the size. Like they operate like a very nice frame lock folder uh, of a much larger size. So I'm I'm interested uh, that they miniaturize these so well, and um, and they're so stout and sturdy. Is this a steel frame lock? This gotta be steel, right? Um, it's aluminum. Oh, it's aluminum. So that's the thing. I was like, I didn't know you could make an aluminum frame lock. Um, and it feels so light. I assumed it was steel, but I was going to ask you how you got it so light, but okay. <laughs> you got it light by picking aluminum, uh, beautifully centered. It's got the jewels on the, on the posts here. And, uh, yeah, very, this is a, this is a really cool knife but i think for me i i'm looking more towards the larger uh bolstered knives with the long spear point oh thank you jim uh if you want to uh save 15 percent on any of these brighton blades um for yourself or for gifts um uh diane was kind enough to give me this uh junkie 15 discount code on their website so definitely check that out thank you very much that's that's really generous thank you guys so this uh, was it this past year, 2021, you, Diane, accepted the most innovative knife award design 
for the fox. What was it called? I I played with it as much as I could before the next guy Saturn. took it from me. The Saturn. Saturn. Yep. Yep. Now that, that was really fun for us because, you know, usually we're there at the award ceremonies, but Gabriella, who owns Fox Nights in Italy, he's there and goes up and gets the award. Well, due to COVID, they couldn't come. And so my daughter, Kimmy, and I got to go accept the awards and it won the, the best imported design. And then it won overall knife of the year. And we carried those trophies around with us all night long. They, <laughs> they couldn't even get us to set them down, you know, so it was, it was fun. Were, were, uh, were you a part of the team that brought that to market? I would love to say yes. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> um, <laughs> as far as bringing the idea to market, no. As far as helping to bring it to the U.S., to make it available for sales, yes. Well, yeah, that's exactly what I'm asking. Well, you brought okay. the knife to us. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I actually don't have one, but I, I uh, played with it quite a while. I, I'm a sucker for a dagger, and I love the idea of a folding dagger. And I, there are only a couple of true folding daggers out there with the double edge and the whole nine yards. And well, uh, we joke that that has got to be like a, a fidget spinner for adults because yeah. once you start playing with that mechanism. It, you can't stop, you know, you can just sit and play with it all day. It's really, so, <laughs> for the people who haven't tried it, both Radius and Saturn have that patented mechanism where you push it in and rotate it with your thumb. And it's a and lot it, of fun. It follows a track, like a semicircular track. And yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm being totally honest. When I saw it, I was like, eh, what, you know, like Okay, let me check this out. And and that that is one of those things where feeling is believing. I picked it up and yeah. I was like, oh, I get it <laughs> immediately. You know, it would be it would definitely be something that would. Well, and one of the cool things about Saturn is it's ambidextrous. You can get left-handed ones also, and that's a big deal. I didn't realize. <coughs> I never even thought how hard it is for left-handed people to even just shut a liner lock. <coughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. There are, uh, yeah, there are a lot of people out there who who bemoan uh, the fact that a lot of manufacturers drill the holes on the on the lefty side for for lefties to use. But you know, if you're not gonna you know, if you're not gonna make a left-handed version, the least you could do is give them the holes. Now, I must admit, I'm one of those guys who's been like these unsightly holes, but <laughs> but still, you gotta you gotta give you know people an option. Um, so. <laughs> what what do you uh, in your day to day operations uh, working in a knife company? Um, is this something? Are you doing things that could be uh, that are scalable to other other jobs, or do you uh, both have like knife uh, knife DNA? Is knife in your blood? <laughs> Go for it. Well, um, so. Our maiden name, my mom's last name is Carver. So I think, you know, we grew up with knives in our blood. Um, but um, it kind of like we said before, like that we are new, like we've had knives in our lives for all growing up that my mom would give us knives for every occasion and everything. But as far as what our background has been, not so much, but um, I don't know. It's been so fun to work together that we, we all live really close to each other that we've stayed really close that we that we want to be together and so it's been really fun to work on this to, together and you know bring our kids closer together through it and uh, that they're all friends and stuff that I don't know one thing that's kind of fun with our kids Christy has four boys my little sister Kimmy has four girls and they have two in each oh not that that matters god. anything but it's just kind oh of my god fun with our families that and they get to help out a lot you know when we get big shipments in if we need things done um you know I have a, a son with special <coughs> needs and sometimes he loves to help go help package up orders and stuff and so mm -hmm. it's just been fun to all work together and have it a family business so yeah, that's uh, that's one of the things. Like I've said, I I love to hear uh, family businesses, but uh, something you just said, Katie, about keeping people close and keeping people together. It's like when you have a mission as a family that's uh, beyond just staying together and being a family and making it work. Um, I I don't know. It it seems, and and I don't have the experience of running a business with my family, but just kind of talking over and over to people, uh, it is something that brings them closer together because there's a lot of um, 
Well, it's perilous. It's not uh, easy to start a company, especially a knife company, and to make it work. And um, so you got your highs and your lows, and together you can make that work. I have two daughters that I'm, that, you know, I uh, I never knew what the term worry meant until I had them, you know. <laughs> and and one of the things I worry about among a, a trillion others is like, uh, are they going to always be this close? Will they be close when they're older? And uh, I'm not saying I'm going to start a knife company to, to keep them close, but um, something like this sort of coordinated effort. Um, I don't know. It, it's helpful. It seems like it's helpful to the family and also to the company. How do you think the family dynamic helps the company grow? Well, one, we know how to get along and we also know how to fight and get over it. <laughs> Just kidding, kind of. No, but I think that we've, we've worked together on things throughout our whole lives. So that we know like, oh, Kimmy, you would be really good at this. Remember that time that you did this one thing or, you know, mm -hmm. Christy, you know, can you do that again? Or, you know, that we already know each other's strengths. We already know each other's weaknesses so that we can be there to back each other up and everything. But Well, and like we, we talked about earlier is we do have such varied talents, you know? I mean, I could no more do the graphics that Christy does or write what Katie does, but I know steel types and I know locking mechanisms and all of that kind of stuff. And so we each bring something different to the table and we were just so lucky the way that that worked out. I mean, even to our packaging, Christy designed all of our packaging. Um, one thing that was so fun was when we did the blade show in Atlanta, people were coming up, other knife companies, and asking us, who did your packaging? Because they really <laughs> liked it and wanted to use them. Nice. And we're like, we did, you know? We've done everything from, from the ground up, even all of our packaging. So we just were really lucky with the how varied our um, talents are. The, yeah, the, none of us had, we, you know, 20 years ago when we all set into our to motion of what we wanted to do in life, we didn't have this this dream. We didn't have this goal. I started writing for the newspaper when I was 17 in high school and I, cool. I graduated in sales and, you know, if years back, Christy went back and got her, her graphic design that we didn't have any idea this was gonna happen. And then as we started getting into it, it was just like, I don't know that it was just, just meant to be together. that it was just meant to be that that our our lives came together to be able to create this and work together. We we need to have um, a fourth sister that that's in accounting. That's <laughs> yeah. good at math and accounting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you can't have it all. My God. <laughs> yeah, you might got you might have to to hire that sister. <laughs> um, yeah. That's our goal. <laughs> but it's well, like. <laughs> It's it's like you have built in institutional knowledge. That's that's like a, one of those catch words that I hear. But but it's like you you already know each other so well that um, there's there you can skip a whole number of layers probably in dealing in dealing with certain situations that come through uh, as a business. As a business, how do you how do you consider? I know that you're new. Uh, you know you have not been around uh, for too long, uh, but. How do you plan on um, figuring out what is next in terms of uh, knife designs in particular? Like, um, you know, at some point you'll ha you'll go back to the drawing board for that next model year or however that works. Um, what do you what do you what is the thing that inspires you for the new designs and, and for what keeps the designs rolling? One thing I think we really do is we really, really listen to our to our customers. We want to hear what they like, you know. Um, these did you show these knives yet? Not yet. I didn't know if during a water break they showed these. Uh -huh. But this is another collaboration we did with Fox. This is Fox's baby core, but we did it in different colors. And this was actually um, a, an influencer named Miss Panda Pirate who um, just photoshopped a baby core and said, I wish you'd do it in this pinkish purple color. And we happened to see it posted. And I told Gabriella, because he, he has it in the browns and the blacks and everything. I'm like, we want to do that for Brighton. Um, I'll give you some colors I want you to do and we'll do it for Brighton. And so that's how these came about. And like I said, with the karambits, that was that wasn't ever our idea. That was people reaching out to us and telling us we want um, we want something for self defense, 
And so, um, well, and even the, the not so heavy metal, we actually, we went to our local mall down in Salt Lake city, um, when we were starting and we did a lot of validation, we walked around, we're lucky we didn't get kicked out. We didn't have actual knives with us. We had pictures of knives. Um, and we, we showed them different designs. We asked people what, what, what it was they were looking for, what they wanted, how, you know, you what like they would this? use. Would Do you like this? Yeah. yeah. And so, um, a lot of them loved the designs, um, but then there were some that they wanted something a little bit more simple, um, you know, yet still classy. So we that's yeah. why we came up with the not so heavy metal um, knives. And they've got like the fun, different um, coordinating hardware with each of them. And, you know, we really want to listen to um, people out there that are that are using knives and and kind of see what it is that they're looking for, what what they feel like is missing. And so, you know, we have our ideas as well and we'll continue to develop those. But if other people have ideas of things that um, that they're thinking of, we get people email into us and and some will probably take to, you know, um, and, and make it happen. And some are just good ideas that, you know, hopefully someday somebody else will make happen. But we love listening to the customers. And so I think that's also probably one of our, our strengths, I would say, is is, that's big for us because we know as consumers, we like to be listened to and we, you know, have things that we like. And so um, we're trying to do that for, for our customers. Uh, I, I think that that sounds, well, speaking as a collector, that sounds, uh, that's music to my ears. And I know that that's music to the, the knife community's ears, uh, if I can say that, um, because that's what people value most. Or if, if, you know, if you're buying a custom knife, you you value that relationship that you develop with the custom knife maker. If you are a, um, I don't want to put it this way, uh, uh, a, a super fan of a company, um, you want to know that the company is listening to what you want. Um, and that's a relationship that you build with that company. You can't have that personal thing that you might have with the, uh, with the custom maker, but you do have um, you know, companies that have ears and want to sell knives. And when they listen and they're nimble enough to make changes, and it's not like, wait for 10 years for <coughs> us to get rid of all of this 8CR13 MOV, and then we'll get to your thoughts. Um, uh, I, I think that people really, you know, like and respect that um, because then you're giving them what they want and you're also showing them what you can do when you're putting stuff out that's 100% of your own inspiration, you know? We really do try. We try really hard to make all of our people that support us happy. Um, even to the point, somebody emailed. We went with no pocket clip on the inspirational line and pocket clips on the not so heavy metal. Mm -hmm. to give a variety for what women would like. But I, we had someone email us and they loved our inspirational line so much, but they wanted a pocket clip. And I had a sample in my office when we were deciding which way to go. And uh -huh. I said, okay, just between you and I, send me your address. I'll get you one, you know. <laughs> and I mean, and I only out out on an hour on every day or so. We might not have any more. Hey, no, hey Diane. We really, really want people to love our company. Think that we care about them and the, you know, it, it this, I've done a lot of knives for a lot of companies, but there is nothing that I put my heart into the way Brighton is. It's very personal and means a lot to me. And we want everybody that buys anything from us to love it. Uh, you, so you, you're out in Utah. And um, to me, I have a, 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 a it's probably a, a fantasy version of what Utah is. I know I've, well, I've been out there, but it's been 40 years since I've been to Utah and I just remember it being beautiful. And I follow a couple of people on, um, on YouTube who have hunting channels and I don't hunt, but I just like to w walk out there virtually, you know? Um, and it seems like a different environment. I, I live outside of Washington DC. And before this, I lived in New York city, uh, very unpermissible, uh, kind of environments for this kind of thing. L less, less so, you know, DC is a little more relaxed or at least Virginia where I am is a little more relaxed. Um, but is it is there more of a knife culture in Utah? Would you say is it more oh, common definitely. for? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, outdoor retailers been in Salt Lake for years, and then it moved for a short time, but it's coming back. Blade Show West was in Salt Lake this year. Well, there's we have a very upscale mall, mall right across the street from the Salt Palace, which has a Marriott hook to it, and we go in there during the shows, and 
have knives all over the table, um, showing them to people and talking about them. And the waiters and stuff will walk by and go, oh, that is so cool. It's just a very, it's, it's a really knife friendly atmosphere in Utah. It's a very, Utah's very, very outdoorsy. Right. I mean, we have so many national parks. We have so many ski resorts. We have so many biking trails and everything. It's just a very, very outdoorsy state and nice go along with that. I'm sure most kids won't be able to do this, but my kids have the keychains hooked to their backpacks. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't suggest that for a lot of schools, but our, yeah. our kids are able to do that. I was going to say, is this the backpack that they take to school with them? <laughs> oh, their teachers are all know. Oh, yeah. no, you've got a new one. My, my yeah. six-year-old takes a new one all the time to, to show off. But... You're, you're a six-year-old, you say? 15. 15. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I was going to say, I like the cut of your jib. Uh, you know, um, uh, I do remember someone recently, um, it was probably about three years ago in, in our area, there was a, there was a, a hubbub about in like too sharp of a plastic, uh, knife at school, something like that. And I was just like, all right, things have gotten a little ridiculous here. <laughs> it's but, a little um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that uh, it's also a good knife state, Utah. Uh, there are uh, and now I'm I'm blanking, but I know that I've spoken with a number of uh, knife makers out in Utah. Um, so we think of all right. How how do I put this? Um, well, first of all, how what is it like, Diane, uh, for a woman working in the knife industry, um, which at, at least as far as I can tell, has probably been male dominated for a long time? It definitely was, you know, there, there are a few women, um, Goldie Russell, I don't know if you're familiar with A.G. Russell, yes. she's kind of a icon in the knife industry, but there wasn't really a lot, but I have to tell you, everybody was so kind and so good when I started in this industry. I think there was, for one thing, I had no ego. I was willing to admit everything I didn't know when I first started in this, and so everybody you know, there were a lot of, I had a lot of really good mentors, let's just say that, um, both in manufacturers and just other important people in the industry from distributors and dealers and everything. So I found the knife industry super, super welcoming and, and just a fun industry. They'd never really been to it the blade shows much before. And everybody's just like, it is such a fun crowd of people. It just really is. It's just so relaxed and fun and they're giving awards and everybody's cheering for each other and teasing each other. And it's just, it's a fun, fun industry. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I, I'm actually not surprised that you say that. And I, and I have to be honest, uh, you know, there, um, I'm, I'm sure there aren't too many industries where, where that would be the answer. Um, and, and I'm not saying that in any sort of, you know, shaming way at all. Um, my, my wife is quite the hot shot in her industry and it's, it, and it is, and, and she's had a, a bit of a struggle getting there because there's a lot of male ego in the way because of it's a right. very kind of, you know, security type thing. Um, yeah. So it's it's great to hear, and I am not surprised because everyone I've talked to to a person says that the the knife community we call it a knife community, and I'm very hesitant to like I I, I was very hesitant to ever use the term uh, online friend because I'm like I've never shaken his hand, but that has changed over time, you know, and oh for sure, um, you know. So uh, where am I going with this? I'm sorry, I just got uh, <laughs> a, a little. Uh, excited there but um, no we have a lot of friends that we've never met you know whether they're customers that we get, kind of get in an email chain with or or people like you and just people that have been so supportive of us that it just makes us so happy and it, yeah. it feels like a big community family so our first um, blade show being part of the company, I went with my mom years ago, but we went to Texas and my mom and Kimmy are, you know, oh, giving hugs to people and oh, what, how was your family? How is this? And I thought, oh man, it's going to take us years to feel that way. And then in Atlanta, we go and I, I see my friends and I'm happy to see them. And then Salt Lake, I have this bigger group of friends and I'm like, I didn't realize how fast I would feel like I was a part of this knife community that, 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 that you have such a good in friendship with in less than a year's time that people are so helpful, 
so kind, so, so wonderful, just, just fun, the yeah. fun to be part of. I've, I've sort of noticed um, from a group of, uh, and, and I don't even know, it's, it's not a group, it's just a loose collection of people that I've met um, who are, who are just passionate reviewers and collectors at YouTubers. Um, there's, they take all comers. It's like the knife community takes all comers and, and it's a place, it seems to be a hobby that collects people who are, <laughs> who have an overabundance of passion and, and they have to, um, you know, kind of change their ways maybe and start collecting knives or, or just add, you know, to the energy they have and, and draw that in. And, and what I think people get the most out of it. Uh, yeah, we love the knives. Definitely love the knives, but it's, it's been this people thing. Uh, that's that's been bubbling up, which is a big surprise to me. Well, you know, we we used to talk about it a lot because people are passionate about country of origin or so many aspects of a knife, and yet other products they never even think about it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like I was their the, iPhone. I, I was not only the knife product manager, but I was the flashlight product manager. Also, I did lights. I never had anybody ask me where a flashlight was made. You know, how many lumens does it have? Yes, where it was made. And so we discussed what is this thing about knives that people are so passionate? And we kind of thought that knives are kind of heirlooms. You know, I have knives that were my dad's who had knives that were his grandpa's. You know, yeah. there's you don't pass down shirts. You don't pass down, you know, yeah. so many items in your that you use every day. Once that person's gone, they're going to goodwill or, you know, but nice people keep them and they pass them down. And I think that's got to be part of it. But I still don't completely understand why people are so passionate about this particular tool. Yeah. Yeah. Knives, pens, watches, things yeah, that yeah. things that are uh, it's it seems like pen guys, watch guys, knife gals are all a adjacent. Pen guy and a knife guy. Pen guy and knife guy, they go together. Yeah, they do. They do. And I like watches too. Um <laughs> I just can't can't let that get away with me. But <laughs> um, but they're 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 use if, if you buy them, you know, and, and there's that there's that grim realization, oh, this will outlast me without a doubt, unless I drop it in a smelter you know this will outlast me without a doubt and and there's something reassuring about that and there's something uh you know life affirming about that i i, I know i'm getting deep but uh i i mean that like you you have it in your hand and you know that this is gonna uh, hopefully my daughter gets this one and hopefully she doesn't sell this one and that one and i gotta make my list of who to you know all this kind of stuff but but it's that heirloom thing that you touch on i think i think you're right about that I think I think so. And it's funny, my dad collected knives and he was he passed away before I ever did this job, which I'm pretty sure he's orchestrated all of this from heaven. <laughs> but um, he liked buck knives. You know, he wasn't into collecting high end customs or anything. But when I, I buck knives did some knives for me once and I was up meeting with Chuck Buck and I told him my dad would have thought I was meeting with such a celebrity, you know, and <laughs> Chuck laughed and everything, but it, 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 he would have, he would have thought that was so cool that I was in a meeting with Chuck Buck, you know, yeah. so yeah. it's just a super fun industry and, and it means a lot to a lot of people. Yeah. That's my kind of celebrity, Chuck Buck. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck Buck. That's cool that you you got to meet him and work with him. Um, so I have a I have a thought, and that is a um, and it comes from from the little karambit my my wife has. Someday, uh, a neck knife. What do you think of neck knives? Do you think that's too on the nose uh, for a uh, you know more too much like jewelry? No, I think that'd be really cool. I actually have a custom neck knife that um, a custom knife maker made me. And I love it. And I, I wear it and use it sometimes if I'm out and about, you know, in the outdoors. But um, I, I've done neck knives. I've done neck knives that are actual jewelry. But mm. I think you're talking more of a neck knife that you'd actually use, right? Yes. Okay. I think it's a great idea. I've done several um, under different brands from Brighton. But I like that idea. I, I, I like I'm it. a I'm a sucker for neck knives. I know not everyone is, but I think they um, 
I think in a in a in a woman's uh, wardrobe or on a woman's body, she might be more used to having things around their neck. A lot of guys yeah. just don't don't like things on their neck. Um, no, you're right. And if you're jogging or something, and you have like spandex clothes or something, you know, you don't have a place for a knife, but a neck knife you could put around your neck. It, that's a good idea. Good idea. Uh, Oh, why, thank you. <laughs> we'll give you credit in the next time. Like well, okay. So as as um, Brighton Blades uh, kind of comes up to, you've already come up to speed, but as you start to, to forge your way forward, um, 10 years hence, what would you like the company to look like? That's something that we, we were actually talking about even when we were setting up here, that where where we want to go, that we have this great vision that it's going to be great, but we're still figuring out exactly how that looks like in our lives and how it looks like for the company, that um, we want to we want to keep it happy for our family, but we would like it to, to expand to be able to reach more women. So I don't know that we have a great answer for that yet. I think right now we've been moving so fast that um, we have, we, we haven't been able to really, it was last October sit down we started and, yeah. shipping, right? Yeah. yeah. We started shipping last Whoa. October. So okay. this is our anniversary or one year anniversary. And we haven't even hardly taken a second to. God. No, we've gone to all the shows. We've got four light knife lines out. That yeah. one year old, and I'm already asking what you want to do with your life. I know, <laughs> I know. That's a dad. That's a dad for you. Well, I I love what you're doing, and I think um, uh, it is very different. My wife always bristled at the pink knives. I got her one pink knife. I actually I have two pink knives, and I I love them both. They both have black blades, and one of them is called Pinky Tuscadero. You probably know who that oh, is yeah. um, because of her dress. Um, so I, I, it's funny. I'm the one in the family that likes the pink knives. Um, so I like the direction you've taken this company and that it's not just that simple answer of just change the color and, you know, here you go. Um, it's deeper than that, and I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah. It, yeah. it means a lot to us. Oh, great. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming on the Knife Junkie podcast. And uh, for those of you who are patrons, uh, we're going to continue this conversation uh, for a few more minutes. So come check it out. Otherwise, uh, Christy, Diane and Katie, thank you so much for coming on the Knife Junkie podcast. It's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you so Thanks. much. Do you like the sound of the alphanumeric combinations M390, 204P, and 20CV, but bristle at 8CR13MOV and AUS-8? You are a knife junkie, probably worse. This uh, I wrote down, knife, the best gift anyone could get. Uh, that was uh, the words of Diane's uh, father, so the uh, Christy and Katie's grandfather. And uh, I think that that is um, probably the best thing I've ever and most accurate statement I've ever heard, because it is true. It is the best uh, gift to get. And I always tell people to get me knives and they say, I wouldn't know what to get you. And I say, I don't care. You can you can get me anything. Uh, so anyway, I like that. I like that quote there. Uh, but even more than that, uh, Brighton Blades, very happy to have them on and very excited to see uh, where the company goes. And and I, I like where the company is right now, especially that not so heavy metal. They kept throwing it up there for me to look at and drool over. So I might have to go uh, get one of those and uh, one for each member of the family. And just because it's Brighton Blades doesn't mean someone named Bob can't own one. All right. Working his magic behind the switcher is Jim. And I thank him so much. Uh, he does so much for us here. So I want to thank you, Jim, uh, and uh, the rest of you for listening. So until next time, please. Don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, Email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.